I get to go meet the people that made my favorite person. I'll always take December away over summer. Abby, you and Harper have a perfect relationship. She is my person, and I really want everyone to know that. I want to marry her. So I was reading the Entertainment Weekly article with Ben Delacram and Jinx, Jinx Monsoon, who I'm actually talking to later today um, oh. about their own special. So I'll tell them I saw you. And um, um, Dela said that this thing that I thought was pretty interesting, which is we were all working to figure out how we reclaim a sense of, sense of warmth and joy of the holidays, which is every straight person's birthright, but queer people have a little bit of a harder time of sort of accessing that. And I was wondering, Clea, if you could sort of talk about how that relates to sort of this movie and like why it's so important to have a queer representation in the Christmas space. Well, you know, as someone who is a big fan of Christmas movies and grew up never seeing my own experience represented, you know, it feel you you feel like it's not really for you, you know, that it is, it's something you get to observe and that you get to, you know, you get to watch other people kind of do it, but you don't, you know, anything related to family and holidays can sometimes be difficult for, you know, an LGBTQ plus person. And I think, you know, being able to, you know, have, you know, have a story that is so traditional, that is so universal, told from the perspective of an LGBTQ plus character centering around an, you know, a gay relationship, it's so significant, it is so validating, you know, and to have people be, you know, to people who have never felt represented, who have never felt seen in that way on screen, I think is, you know, will hopefully, you know, fill a void for people and you know help them give them a movie that they can look at and be like same so many queer movies too are, are either terrible <laughs> i mean there's a lot that are they're bad but you want people watch them because they're that's what exists or they end in tragedy <laughs> do you know what i mean and this movie pretty much from the get there are a couple of moments where we're like i don't know but like you kind of know from the trailer that it's going to turn out okay yeah. um did you, I mean, was that always something that was in, was that was in the story? Like that, that was the end goal. We really wanted a story that, you know, had a happy ending, you know, because it, it, you're right. It is, you know, the best case scenario in a lot of gay romances is that the people fall in love, they have this incredible experience and then they never see each other again. Best case scenario, you know, <laughs> and then even worse things can happen, you know, at the end and to give, you know, and, you know, an LGBTQ plus audience of, you know, a big, bright, happy ending was really, you know, was really important to us. Um, Mary, you guys wrote this movie together. Thinking back to where you started, what didn't make the movie? Like, was there a turn or an extra character or whatever that just didn't make it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the, in the process of, of writing, you know, this story, Clea's had um, in her mind for a long time. And, and when she asked me to come on board and write it with her, th there was like a loose outline of like where the story would go. And then when we started uh, brainstorming and, and fleshing it out more fully, there were definitely like ex other characters in the family that uh, eventually, you know, because there are so many characters in this story and you want to give each character equal way to make sure that they're serving this larger story and then also that you can like fully serve their individually individual stories that there there were definitely characters that we loved so much but we we had to um we had to just for the sake of like keeping the story going had to say goodbye to 